All righty, I'm here to talk about Fury 325 at Carowinds and what has happened with it. Um, everything I'm about to discuss is pure speculation, um, and obviously Carowinds and Bulger and Mabillard know best. Um, and yeah, I believe they've provided a statement. Honestly, it was really professional, super transparent, and um, I honestly fully respect that statement. Um, and I fully trust that this is never going to happen at a Cedar Fair park ever again. Um, and it shouldn't have happened. I know Cedar Fair's safety standards, and they are honestly immaculate. Um, so it's uh, quite shocking that it did take so long to get noticed, and that's the only flaw in the entire storyline, um, is how it did take over a week for Carowinds to catch on to that in the, the structure, and that is definitely um, a maintenance problem. So I, in my previous video, I obviously have talked to people in the industry. That is the one benefit to being a construction rumors and speculation channel is you get some serious connections um, in your home parks community. And I have some to be honest, really phenomenal connections in the construction industry. And I actually have kept my mouth shut for the most part um, until I've heard some concrete um, kind of, I guess you would call it speculation still on what happened. And uh, since my last video, I've had the opportunity to have a really good conversation with a welding company um, that works on, you know, some really serious projects in Canada. And... Honestly, like, it all makes sense to me, and I'm going to present what I know about the situation from talking with this uh, amazing company, um, and I know this company would 100% know uh, what transpired or what could have been avoided, and I'm going to share that information, and obviously take that with a grain of salt, because it is just speculation, um, and uh, again, I trust Bulger and Mabillard and Cedar Fair with my safety beyond belief, and I can definitely assure you this will never happen again, um, especially with it making the big time news. Cedar Fair is one of those companies that does not like anything negative um, shared about them in the media. I do want to talk about I, I like I think this was such a serious um, topic of discussion and honestly hearing all the speculation and like the assumptions in the community it, it's been kind of a turnoff like everyone immediately jumping down companies throats and assuming what went wrong without waiting for all the information or at least gathering some like really important um, context to the situation it, it was just like a really toxic Thing to watch transpire. Um, I, there were a lot of people that really liked my video um, when I discussed what was going on and, you know, defending Cedar Fair because, again, I do fly my drone every day and I have seen Wonderland. I know it's a Canadian park and I know the standards could be different in Canada versus the U.S., but I will say since that video, I can confirm the standards at Canada's Wonderland are the same at Carowinds, Cedar Point, Kings Island, and all the American parks. Um, so what you're seeing on my drone camera of Cedar Fair doing their due diligence to analyze the rides and uh, maintain them is the same standard that all the American parks follow. And I can stand by that comment um, full heartedly now. Um, I do want to say that um, everything, again, that I'm about to discuss is... Uh, the opinions of myself, and again, not concrete because it did not come from Cedar Fair or Carowinds, and only they know truly what has happened. Um, but I do want to discuss uh, a few things that I've learned. So um, a lot of discussion has been going on about the specific support type that was supporting that section of the ride. And a lot of people have discussed the specific welding um, joint of that su specific support column. Um, in the welding community, <laughs> because there is one, uh, this specific support um, and weld job is actually viewed as kind of like a bad practice, um, I guess you could say. Having two welds so close together um, is could lead to situations like this. Um, it could have been easily avoided given the amount of tension 
in that area probably saw with the um, the lo the load of the train and the location of that weld. Over time, that weld with the diagonal brace and the weld from that connection plate are too close together, possibly touching at some points or even overlapping, um, which creates a very tight location to even maintain or reach that weld um, for a person to perform their weld job. So again, it could have been poor quality, in a critical tension zone. But that, again, that is an assumption. And we see this on some B&Ms, like for example, at Six Flags Over Georgia, I believe it is. And then even at Canada's Wonderland's Leviathan, plates have been added in high tension areas on those style of uh, columns or support columns. Again, this is to help alleviate high areas of tension. And um, it looks like this could have been one of those rides where it needed those plates or a little bit extra welding to support in those weaker weld points if it is that. Again, keyword, if it is that. This is just speculation. So if you look at the way um, the failure sits completely detached, there is a slight offset. This indicates that there may have been some lateral deflection, some preload on the column applying tension, bad tension at that, in the area where the crack initiated, even without the train on it. So that would add to the load of the train on the column to move the column that far, especially considering it has a diagonal brace, would take fairly significant force, but having said that, I don't consider that amount of offset excessive and is probably normal within the load calculations. There's also a chance the offset was caused by slight movement of the adjacent columns because of increased loads due to the column failure and or sagging of the unsupported track section, and it may be caught in person. So again, this is one of those things where um, Cedar Fair standards for maintenance, um, and again, this is not me pointing blame, but it should have been caught. For example, anyone in the industry knows that uh, hairline fractures occur on rides all the time. Like it's, it's it, every theme park in the world, every ride in the world um, will get a hairline fracture. And it is up to the maintenance uh, to discover these. And they are usually 100% of the time caught and caught really early. And they're fixed very cheaply and very um, quickly and efficiently. And it takes a really long time for a hairline fracture to turn into anything serious. Um, for example, as you saw in the video, a lot of these rides are over designed. And I can confirm after talking with a couple of people that even Fury 325 was in no immediate danger. Um, it is so over designed. You saw it like a fully loaded train at like a really high tension point, essentially barely moved again to, to the naked eye, barely moved. Like it was able to support itself. Obviously over time, like the fracture, it becomes more and more. Um, but I just found all this information really interesting. Um, so why did it crack is a question. There are so many variables. Um, I don't believe the column is under designed, but it's possible given the speed of the coaster through that section. One thing that caught my eye about the layout slash column design was that the diagonal brace that the crack progated, propagated from um, across the top of the weld is under tension, being pulled essentially. Had it been on the opposite side of the column, it would be in a compression being pushed. And we probably wouldn't ha be having this conversation um, if that were the case. Steel performs better in compression than it does in tension. Um, seeing the ground surrounding the track, it was unnecessary for that brace to be on the inside. It should have been on the outside of the curve. So I thought that was really interesting information because essentially... Um, when I was having this conversation with the company, 
Um, it appears that B&M put the diagonal braces on the inside tension of the curve to minimize the overall footprint of the coaster, but they'd be better on the outside, a compression state. So that was a, a common um, conversation that I had when I was discussing it uh, with this construction and welding company. Uh, so again, hopefully I haven't lost anyone and hopefully I'm not sounding crazy, but this is just the conversation that I was having. And it was a really interesting conversation. I was like, th I was so invested in this conversation because I was truly learning a lot that I'd never even thought about when it came to a coaster. And it's funny because these design flaws happen all the time. And it, it's a, a common thing. For example, as you just saw, Yukon Striker had a sinking footer, a bobbing footer, and it was an easy fix. And you didn't even need to fix it right away. It ran the rest of the season with a temporary fix on it. And then when the off season came, they did a permanent fix on it. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen with Fury 325. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a, a very dumbed down version of like what the common practices for maintenance at a theme park. And this isn't Cedar Fair. This is every theme park. But essentially every morning, um, a maintenance mechanic does a track walk, which is a visual inspection from the ground looking for anything unusual. This is where it does become a little, you know, like, come on, Carolyn's. Um, they had at least a week, if not more, to see that thing. I'd argue it was visible for at least a week based on the coincidental photo from the week prior. In my opinion, um, from the company again, not my opinion, sorry, that's the primary failure. One individual, maybe two, depending on the shifts, did their track walk and failed to spot it. Um, I believe I can really only speak um, from their their current job and their, their construction company, um, that Cedar Fair uh, did meet and continue to meet and exceed. And this company did stress that they know that, you know, a park like Wonderland and Cedar Fair exceed all manufacturer, state, and provincial regulations with regard to inspection and maintenance. So I do want to stress this. This is a company um, that doesn't even work with Canada's Wonderland, um, may I add, but they, they said that Cedar Fair and a park like Canada's Wonderland is known in the industry, um, to exceed all manufacturer, state, and provincial regulations with regard to inspection and maintenance. Um, but if an individual fails to do their job, things will be missed. And that is going to be the case at any job. And this is what the person stressed. Any job, any industry, anything. Stuff happens. And that is the beauty of an over-engineered um, ride. The system to catch a major crack in a structure, ride, anything in the industry um, is there. But if the, individual, if the individual is complacent, inexperienced, or distracted, it'll be missed. But yeah, so that's essentially everything I ha kind of like learned about the incident. Um, again, it it's a very complicated situation. It could be as simple as a difficult welding job. It could be as complicated as, you know, rearranging the support design for that area, um, as I mentioned earlier. And it could be as, you know, complicated as redesigning the footing map for that specific section, or just as simple as you saw with Leviathan, adding a um, more bracing uh, to high stress, high tension moments of the ride. So I, again, um, none of this is concrete. Again, this is all just speculation. I wanted to pass on what I had, you know, I taken some time. I didn't want to make a video every day about Carowinds and give you guys some really scary or, you know, predictions about what was happening or if it was going to open soon. I wanted to get some concrete information. So I reached out to a lot of my sources and people in the industry and got you guys as much information as I possibly could about what was going on at Carowinds. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and get a better understanding of what possibly could have happened. Um, thanks so much. Have a good one, guys. Bye.